Three Sisters Soup, which is a delicious variation of the traditional Three Sisters, which refers to corn, beans, and squash. So this is a super simple recipe, and it's also vegetarian. There's also a ton of different substitutions that you can make, depending on what you have available. So for our squash, we're going to be using this butternut squash, and we're actually going to just be cooking it in the soup, but we're going to need to cut this up. For flavoring, we have some onion and some garlic, and then some different spices here, which we'll dive into in a little bit. As I said, there are lots of variations of Three Sisters soup, and lots of varieties of Three Sisters have been grown across Turtle Island. Of course, the Three Sisters terminology comes from the Haudenosaunee people, as well as the Cherokee people, and has been planted together as corn, beans, and squash from the Northeast down to the Southeast, down to the Southwest. However, depending on the climate, the humidity, all of the different conditions, the different varieties of corn, beans, and squash that were grown vary quite a bit. So we're using a butternut squash, some sweet corn, and some white cannelli beans. However, if you have access to hominy, which is a traditional version of nishtamalized corn, which is our dry corn that's been treated with wood ashes, which removes that hull, that is a great version to substitute in for your corn. Um, same thing, if you have corn fresh from your garden, you can just cut it right off of the cob and put it into this recipe. You can use canned corn, or you can use frozen corn, or fresh corn. As for this, as I said, we're using white cannelli beans, which is easy to find in a can in the store already cooked. You can, of course, cook your own beans, go through the process of soaking them, and then cooking them for a long period of time. And you can substitute them for any beans that you have available. If you have pinto beans or other varieties of beans, again, you could make them with bear beans or um, your traditional scarlet runner beans. There's hundreds of varieties of beans that have been used and grown across Turtle Island. So feel free to make that substitution. Um, as for your squash, you could use a pumpkin instead. You could use acorn squash. You could use any variety of winter squash that you want. Winter squashes, like our butternut squashes, are particularly sweet which makes them have that perfect balance in this recipe and adds a little bit of flavor to help balance out the onion and the starchiness, the big high protein content of your beans. Now, corn, beans, and squash have traditionally been planted together because they help each other out. They are three sisters. And like siblings can often be, they are very different in their characters and their nature, but they support each other and they take care of each other. So the three sisters have lessons that go beyond just what the planting method entails. If you've been in a corn maze, you understand that corn grows tall and straight and it grows up six feet or more, depending on the type of variety that you have. Now beans, if you've ever grown beans, you may know that you need to plant them next to a trellis or a fence or something that will provide a support structure. But if you plant beans next to corn, corn will act as the support structure for those beans. Now squash, you may understand a little bit better if you've grown zucchini in your garden or you've ever been to a pumpkin patch, squash spreads out. It takes over and it dominates this lower portion of the garden. It has great big leaves that shade the ground and prevent weeds from coming up, but also prevent uh, your sunlight from getting to the ground and evaporating all of the moisture content on your mound. Additionally, squash branches, squash vines, have these little hairs on them, which kind of make them irritating for your bugs to crawl up. So they help prevent pests as well. The last thing is that beans, even though they need corn to help support themselves, beans are a legume, which means that their roots have nodules which contain nitrogen fixing bacteria, which means that beans can take the nitrogen out of the air and put it in the soil. Corn and squash are both heavy feeders which means that they need a lot of nitrogen in the soil. 
and beans can help naturally enrich the soil and help ensure that those nutrients are still getting back to the earth and not depleting the earth of any nutrients. So no fertilizer needed in this system. Really, really cool. So we're gonna cut this up and we're gonna cut up the onions and the garlic and get everything processed and then ready to boil down into our soup. So I'm peeling off my sticker. So butternut squash, as I mentioned before, is a type of winter squash, which means that it has this really thick, hard skin. That also means that it can stay on your counter and it will be perfectly fine if you don't cook it and don't refrigerate it for a couple months. Winter squash is incredibly hardy and tough. That means pumpkins, acorn squash, spaghetti squash, all these different things within the winter squash family make great substitutions in this recipe. This is compared to summer squash, which are things like zucchini, things like our yellow squash that will stay good for maybe a week in your refrigerator before they start to get really soft and can get moldy. So obviously your summer squash needs to be eaten during the summer and your winter squash will stay good into your winter months. That said, you can cut either one of them up and dehydrate them or freeze them and that will keep them good even longer. So we're going to cut this winter squash, this butternut squash here because inside this portion of the butternut is a seed pocket. So we're going to cut the neck which is where most of that meat that we're gonna get our squash from is going to be in. So you can see that this entire portion is all filled with that squash that we're looking for. And I'm just going to cut the skin off of this squash. It's way faster to do it this way than to try to use a vegetable peeler. You want to make sure when you're cutting this that you have a nice sharp knife. A sharp knife is going to be more safe than a dull knife. And that is because you won't have to fight it to get your cuts. Now you can see that I'm using the flat side of this squash to give me a little bit of stability here. squash can still be quite tedious to cut. Just want to make sure that I'm getting all of the skin off of here and then I'll cut the top off and then I just want to cut this into cubes that are about one inch across. So I'm going to into this. And then we're going to cube this up. Losing squash. So I am actually I'm cutting very carefully, cutting a hole in this, and I have a plan for this. It doesn't have a lot of the squash meat inside, but 
But what I'm going to do is just take a spoon and scoop the seeds out of here. If you've ever carved out a pumpkin, you understand what we're doing. We're trying to make this nice and smooth inside. And then I'm going to put this in the oven at 400 degrees for about 40 minutes. And I'm gonna let this get nice and soft. And then I have a bowl for my soup at the end of all of this. If I wanna serve it in a fancy little bowl that's edible, then we can do that. Totally unnecessary, but something fun to do. You can also save these seeds. You can use them to plant new butternut squashes if you want to, or you can roast them up just like you would roast up pumpkin seeds, toss them in some oil with a little bit of salt. You could make them cinnamon sugar flavored and you could roast those in your oven too. And those are a wonderful high protein snack. What's really cool about the Three Sisters is that even though this recipe doesn't have any meat in it, eating corn, beans, and squash together actually forms a complete protein. They're perfectly nutritionally balanced so that you can get all of the essential amino acids that you could get with a meat, which is pretty cool. aside for my compost pile. So what's a great thing to do with scraps, even if you don't have a compost pile, you can save some of your scraps that you're not going to be using in a big gallon size Ziploc bag and put it in your freezer and then you can freeze that and it makes really great vegetable broth later. So when that bag gets full, whether it's carrot peels or potato peels or celery tops or anything, you can put that in some water and let it simmer for about 20 minutes and then strain all those vegetables out and you have vegetable broth. We're actually using vegetable broth in this recipe, so really, really simple to make your own if you don't wanna buy a carton or use bullion or something like that. We're going to work on cutting up the onion. So this is just a regular yellow onion that you can find in the store. However, there are lots of varieties of wild onions that grow all around Turtle Island. So wild onions that you'll find typically have much, much smaller bulbs, but that makes them easier to dehydrate and to keep without having to worry about them going bad. So wild onions obviously have a very, very strong onion flavor with those big green, um, almost chive-like stalks, and that makes them pretty easy to identify. If you have access to wild onions, definitely throw some wild onions on this recipe instead. I'm just gonna cut this up and I'm going to, again, set these pieces aside for the compost or for vegetable broth. And I'm just gonna peel all of this so that we can get this onion cut up. And this onion will just help add some flavor to this recipe, but we're really gonna saute it down to get that flavor out and not have big chunks of onion in here. Sure that all of our pieces of onion are relatively the same size. And 
And then I'm actually going to put this in the same bowl with my squash because I'm going to add them to the pot at the same time. And that's going to help me ensure that the onions cook down and we caramelize the outside of the squash before we add our liquids and cook everything down. Perfect. And then I'm going to cut up my garlic. And garlic is, of course, another edible and flavorful food in that onion family, that allium genus. Fastest way to remove the paper on garlic is just to hit it sideways with your knife. And that kind of also acts like a garlic press to help get that flavor out. And then we're just gonna mince this garlic into itty bitty pieces. garlic that is in the refrigerator that may come in a jar already pre-minced, you could use that in this recipe as well. Awesome. That is it for the cutting, which means that we get to transition over to the stove and see everything get sauteed in before we add our liquids. So I have my pan over here that I've added a little bit of avocado oil to. So we're going to saute and caramelize our onions and our garlic and our squash. So I have this oil heating up right now and I'm just giving it a second to heat up. So I have my onions and my garlic and my squash. I'm just gonna add those into here and I'm going to keep this moving. Just throw things outside of my pot. Mm -hmm. Close up of things moving. So I'm really watching for my onions to go from being this opaque white color to being more translucent. And that's just going to tell me that they're cooked down and that they're no longer all crunchy, but they're sauteed down into what I'm looking for. I also want to make sure that I'm keeping this relatively moving. So I have my heat at about medium heat, but I want to make sure that everything is moving so that it's, nothing's burning. Getting close to being done, which means that we're going to add our spices so that they can cook in here at this medium heat as well. So in here I have some cumin, I have some cedar smoked salt, I have some thyme, and actually right here I have some dried cedar. So that's going to add a little bit more of that cedar flavoring into everything and really give this a truly indigenous flavor. But we're gonna sprinkle everything in there. And then I'm gonna stir it. And at that high heat, it's gonna really bring out the flavor of all those spices. We do wanna make sure though, at this stage, we're definitely not letting anything burn because we don't wanna have everything flavored like burnt spices. That will be terrible. Mm. 
All right, now, now that our onions are translucent, I'm going to add our vegetable broth so that it'll stop our sauteing and start cooking our squash. Gently adding that vegetable broth. And then I'm going to add. Oh, oh no, I'm gonna get a oh, no. quick shot of that. Sorry. No worries. And then I'm going to add our beans so that they have time to get all that flavor that is in the onions and the garlic. So those are going in there. And so is our corn. So our soup is ready. So we're going to plate it up. So our soup is all ready to be eaten. And I'm going to bring this over to show you guys so that we have our big chunks of squash and our corn and of course our beans and everything is flavored with all those good spices that we put in. So we are ready to eat our soup. I hope you guys enjoy this and I hope you guys get to make this at home. Thank you.